Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on UFT automation. Um, in this video we will look at uh, descriptive programming. Uh, you know what, we will not be looking at descriptive programming, we will be looking at object spy to explore application objects to understand more because that is what is needed for descriptive programming and object spy will be your friend. Without object spy it will be very time consuming, uh, very difficult to do descriptive programming. Okay, so let us dive in. So let me go ahead and start Object Spy, and that's how I count for the Object Spy. Click on it. So this would be your friend. So we'll start with let me go ahead and minimize uh, Hotmail uh, browser. So okay. We have uh, our standard Windows based sample application. We will, I'm sure by now, every one of you recognizes the objects well, but we'll, ex you know, let's step back and kind of explore it so we get a good understanding. So this button here on the object spy is used to explore objects. So if I go and click on it, let's say click on this uh, agent name. So it recognizes login as the parent object that's a dialog box that's a type or that's a class of the object and then win edit so win edit is part of that uh, login dialog box so when you log in you see uh, class name as a dialog but for win edit you hit the class name as win edit so let's say on the dialog box you have class name and if I scroll down see if I can find any useful information um, let's scroll down. Well, here, the uh, this particular property has a, a value of text. So, uh, sorry, value of login. So we can use that. And so there's a text property, and the text property is login. So we could use that. So if I were to say that, hey, within login dialog box not within login i'm saying that you know, let's say there's another dialog box here close you know, similar to this uh, i could say that hey for the i on the within the login dialog box uh not really within let me say that you know let me put it this way uh, I, i'm looking for a login dialog box whose text is login then kind of refers to this right but if i do this if i say uh, I'm looking for a text box or an edit box on the login dialog box who has a text of agent name. Now, you might think that this agent name represents this box, text box, but these two are very different. Agent name by itself is a label. It's just a text on the dialog box. Whereas this text box is a text box by itself. It's a totally different class of object. When you look at this, it says class name as a win edit. You can edit this. So in order to refer to this specific text box, and if you're not password one, if you want to refer to this one, you know, it has an attached text of agent name. Maybe you can use that. If you scroll down here, yeah, that looks more promising. The agent name is attached text. And then let me go ahead and do the same thing on agent name right at the top. But I'm not doing pass, you know, agent name text box, but I'm doing the label right on top. When I click on that, look at this. It says static. You know, it's not going to change. Maybe that's why it is class is static. And look at this. The text is agent name colon. Let me do this on the password one. You know, attach text password, class is btn edit. Do the same thing on 
a button here it says win button so every object you know there's a text box label you know tables you know web tables you know for web you know for the web and you have images and all that and everything you know every object is a type of some object you know some class you know is it a, a button or is it a win edit or is it a dialog box or is it a window or you know or some standard message dialog box so all that is you know the nothing but a classification of objects you have different kinds of objects and there's a classification because there could be multiple text boxes so what is a text box that's classifying you right so these are nothing that classification is nothing but class name right so when when you see win button it kind of helps you to understand that it's a button it, it would have some text on it and you could click on it so that's how you look at it now why you know i've already you know said that um, you know object spy will be your real friend when it comes to descriptive program and there is a reason for that now let's say if you were to programmatically using descriptive programming talk to this particular uh, dialog box that means you need to know you need to know how to talk to the you know it using its properties so when i say using its properties you know you're using these properties and within descriptive programming it really looks at things you know or you know the the syntax kind of uses something like this what i did here is i you know clicked the later last icon which says copy the identification properties to the clipboard i'm going to do, click that copy that and paste it here just to show you how it actually you know uh, are represented when you know in the code so this is the exact line of you know these are these are the properties that it uses to describe it as you can see you know there's a it's really a property name and a property value it's in double quotes and then a comma then another property comma another property comma and uh, the syntax is pretty much pretty consistent it's always program sorry uh, property name a colon equal to property value property name colon equal to property value and you use double quotes and you'll understand why we use double quotes you know when you look at descriptive programming literally you know i you know i mean after you do it few times you will get to know what kind of property to use to identify the object based on the class but if you have any difficulty um, the simplest way is copy the whole thing all you do is paste it here and just go through this real quick and identify which order you like let's say in this case you have class I don't care about this uh, attached to text is now uh, where is okay there's okay here there's okay here there's okay text here so that's good enough for me I can remove all that visible true width height these two properties would be good enough for me to um, identify the object what if both the buttons have the text okay that's when you use additional properties maybe like window ID uh, maybe the width or style or may it could be so you can obviously use class text uh, focus false height to 18 to class button in the style xy coordinates if you have two buttons with the same title as okay and if other properties are same then pretty much you are down to either you know absolute x and y or x and y coordinates most likely you might want to use x and y because that's relative to the window size you know the, the actual login screen okay okay so that's how you would grab things here we'll again look at this when we actually do a descriptive programming on windows based application also when you do for web we'll again use this and we'll uh, i'm going to copy this and get the properties from here drop it in there to identify okay well that's uh, about uh, windows based applications uh, let's uh, look at um, a 
web-based application. So here we have a, a browser, right? And we are looking at uh, hotmail.com. Let me do identify. Let's say I want to see what this sign in is. I want to click on it. So it says uh, web button. And as you can see, the, there's a hierarchy here. Yes, it's a browser, a page, and a button. So it's always like that for web applications. It always starts with the browser. Next, it's a page, and next, what's on the page? It could be a link. It could be, you know, it could be a button. It could be a text, edit box, anything. Let me try one more time. Let me point to another one. Uh, you know, the email ID field it says web element. Um, do uh, there's a checkbox here. Click on it. See, okay, web checkbox. Click on it. This is a link cannot access. See, class name is link. Link again, browser page and link. Now, when we look at let's look at this link here real quick because there are multiple links there. There's a text there, so the class is link. And if I scroll down a little bit, there is something called inner text that's a pretty common uh, property that is used to identify uh, you know objects within a web application. Uh, name definitely that would help and text that too there's a title blank scroll down yeah that's it so I mean it's, it, it is similar to uh, Windows based application except that you know it uses you know it's a web based so it has web based properties so once you go through a couple of uh, couple of object properties you you get a fair amount of an idea what what these properties are and we'll also look at HTML code probably in the next video that will help you what this HTML ID means to you what is HTML tag in a text you know you know in your HTML name you know we'll understand all that as well now let me go and look at another one let's say what is this it's an image click on it so it's an image so it's logo underscore mail dot PNG that's the file name. That's a property of that uh, you know object. Uh, name is image visible. It's gonna be coordinates and all that. So the tomorrow, if we need to click on the image on this particular image, you can you know use this description and do a click on it. Let's look at uh, this. You know, try it now. What is this? this? Is a link? What is this? It's an image. What is this? That's an image. What is this? This is a web element. Uh, index access HTML. Okay. Net access title. There's a link here again. Contact us. So, so it looks like this is part of some web table. So if I do contact us web table and I do uh, highlight an application. So that's a table actually. A table is uh, within HTML you have an HTML element called table and you can actually build a table just like Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Let me go ahead and close that. Okay. So this again, you know, this is, you know, same as exploring a Windows based application except the fact that you would see different parent objects here. You know, you'll find an object and the parents would be a little bit different compared to uh, a Windows based application and the properties will be different and because there is nothing called HTML ID or tag with uh, you know with the other application I mean to say the um, with the Windows based application so well that's how you know you explore uh, web based applications and uh, uh, that's how you read properties and by the way this comes real handy and when we do uh, descriptive programming uh, on uh, websites, you know, we will use more of object, uh, you know, object spy and get properties and you know build our you know script there, you know, without even you know uh, using any kind of object repositories, because once we say descriptive programming, the whole object repository is completely gone. We are we will not use object repositories from there on. It will be completely descriptive programming, and the objects are described within the code to identify them uniquely well okay that's you know again you know it's a recap or a little bit introduction into um, 
uh, object spy and using object spy you know reading the object properties and trying to understand uh, it and also we used uh, the you know copy the identification properties to the clipboard this comes real real handy and you will see the importance of that when we actually do descriptive programming okay well thank you very much and i will uh, see you in the next video